I did a video a while back introducing some of the features in the Toolbit system in the Path Workbench in FreeCAD. And I mentioned at that time that it's possible to create custom tool shapes, uh, but I didn't go into detail about how that's done. So I'd like to cover that in this video. If you're not already familiar with the Toolbit system, I suggest you watch that video first. I'll put a card up above. Uh, there's a number of concepts that I refer to in this video that uh, would be helpful to understand first. The Toolbit system was designed to let you create uh, any kind of tool shapes that, uh, that you want. Basically, you can use anything in the Park Design Workbench uh, to create whatever shapes are, are desired. But that doesn't mean that the Path Workbench can automatically use those features. Um, for the most part, we're still limited to cylindrical cutting tools uh, and a number of small features uh, that will take advantage of other, uh, other properties that we can assign to a tool bit. For instance, a flute count or um, a chip load for calculating feed rate. But if you're trying to create more complex tool shapes like, uh, like router bits or shaping bits, uh, don't assume that those will automatically be useful uh, in the path workbench beyond their, their nominal diameter. And path can't currently do uh, uh, collision detection, so you know, using complex tools won't uh, uh, necessarily be helpful to avoid gouging your material or something like that. It's still on you to make sure that, uh, that the tool path is accurate. The Path Workbench comes with a handful of uh, tool bit uh, shapes already defined that cover the, the vast majority of the use cases, but I'm sure there are uh, tool shapes that are um, still needed. And so this video is going to go through what it takes to create a, a custom tool shape from scratch. Also, if you want to modify the tool bits to add uh, custom attributes uh, to store information that you care about, uh, this will give you an introduction in how those uh, attributes are defined in the tool bit shape. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to start by switching to the part design workbench and uh, creating a new document. Now, uh, on the screen, I've already created the document and I've added an image plane where I've imported an image that I downloaded from a manufacturer's website. This is the tool we're going to be modeling. It's a, it's a ball end tapered cutter. So it has a small ball end and then a, an angled or a tapered cutting edge section. Uh, and then a, 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 a straight shank. I've also carefully positioned the image plane. It's important that the tip of the cutter, uh, which I'll refer to as the control point, uh, the tip of the cutter is going to be the part that is controlled by the G-code path. So you want the tip of the control point of your tool to be on the origin uh, of the sketch. So it's important that, that, that the center of the bottom of the tool be at the zero zero point. I'm just roughly sketching the general profile uh, so it gives a sense for the tool. I apologize that it's uh, white lines on a white background. It's a little hard to see. But I'll get down to the corner and uh, use the M key to switch to uh, the arc mode and then I'll set the end point of that right on the origin and then the M key again to uh, switch to uh, the uh, straight line mode. And, uh, and then I'll close the profile out uh, by uh, setting the endpoint constraint with my starting point. And I can roughly drag these around and if I need to I'll set uh, constraints to keep the lines straight. But I'm not setting any geometric points at this point. Uh, or any ge geometric constraints at this point. I'll add those later. I do want the center point of my arc to be on the center line of the tool. And getting it perfect isn't uh, important at this point because we're going to drive all of those shapes with constraints. So I'll turn off the image plane and then select the sketch. Whoops, got to select the sketch first. Select the sketch not the body, the sketch, there you go, and do the revolve. And you can see that we got a, a pretty fair representation of the tool. It's not quite right, but we're going to fix that uh, parametrically. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is switch back to the path workbench because I need to add the property bag. And you want to select the body and then click path utils and property bag and that will add a, a, an element called attributes and it'll be nested underneath the body. Double clicking on it opens the editor and initially it's going to be empty. There's no properties here. So I'll start by creating properties. You give them a name. Uh, no spaces in the name. Uh, if you want spaces to appear multi-word, uh, you can use Pascal case which it, with every first letter capitalized and then they'll show up as uh, um, with spaces when they're displayed. If they are uh, geometric constraints that are going to drive distance, you want for the type you want to choose either distance or length. That uses the FreeCAD uh, schema, unit schema. So the user will be able to enter their values uh, with a unit string like millimeters and FreeCAD will understand what that means and it can convert them on the fly. If you're doing something like angles, you can use either an integer or a float. The tool tips are optional uh, but helpful especially if this tool shape is going to be shared with someone else. So I'm putting in uh, properties that correspond to the uh, to the values that the manufacturer specifies, the things that they control. Uh, so they've got a, a cutting edge length which is the length of that tapered section, the overall length of the tool, the angle of the taper, and the diameter of the of the ball end. There's also the uh, uh, the diameter of the shank. So now closing it out, I can select that attributes and I can enter the individual values here within the property bag. Uh, and again, you can enter them with a unit string. So for instance, this length is three inches and I'll just enter three IN and FreeCAD will convert it to millimeters because that's the unit schema that I'm currently using. So the diameter of the ball is uh, 30 thousandths of an inch the length is three inches, the cutting edge is about a third of an inch, and the taper angle is one degree. Now I'll go back into the sketch and I'll start setting constraints uh, on the elements and then linking them to, uh, uh, to the properties that I just created. If you've done any kind of modeling in FreeCAD using a spreadsheet, uh, it works basically the same way. For instance, I'll sec select that center line and then uh, I'll use the function button and type in attributes, dot, and then the name of the uh, property. Now the attributes is coming from the property bag. And it'll jump around a little bit, getting me out of shape, and so I can kind of drag things back in to mostly keep it in shape until all the constraints are set. When a linked property is or uh, constraint is set on a one of the properties, it'll turn orange in the display. So now I'll set the diameter on my ball end. Same thing, attributes dot diameter, and click OK. And it's very small, but it is there. And I can set the angle for my one degree taper angle. And then I need to set the length of that cutting edge. And this is just going to be the height of that point above the, uh, the origin. So the only thing that's left is the overall diameter, the shank diameter. And you have two options here. Um, one thing you can do is select that edge and then take the shank diameter and divide it in two. Remember we're only modeling half the tool and then revolving it. So what we really need is the radius here. And that, that works fine. You can do that. Um, but it, it's looking at, if you come in and examine the uh, the sketch, it's not quite obvious what's going on. An alternative is to set a reference line and set the endpoint symmetric to the center line. 
and then set the length of that reference line to the, the uh, diameter that you, or the shank diameter in this case. And then set the endpoint of the reference line to the point on the, uh, uh, in the actual sketch. And then it'll, it'll drive it that way. And now you're, what you're looking at is the diameter property displayed. It's just a little bit more friendly to look at. So in this case, I'm kind of stuck because the, the manufacturer hasn't given me enough information to fully constrain the sketch. The angle uh, of the, the matching part is not specified, nor is the length of the straight part of the shank. So I'm going to just guess that the uh, that angled part is about half the length of the cutting edge and use that. It's not a critical dimension for this tool, um, so I, it's just I'm just putting it in in order to get the sketch fully constrained. So at that point, the sketch is fully constrained, and I can close it, and we have something that looks much more like the uh, uh, the tool that we from the image. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add a number of other attributes here. And these are not attributes that are uh, driving the, the shape, but they are useful anyway. For instance, the flute count is used in the feed and speed calculator. Uh, so I'm going to add an integer property for the number of flutes that the tool has. And I'm also going to add a, uh, uh, a chip load. Uh, this is the feed per tooth that the manufacturer recommends for you know, how, how much load to put on the tool. And uh, uh, that's going to be a distance constraint or a distance property uh, because it's, it actually is a, you know, the distance to feed per revolution of the tool or per tooth in the revolution. It's going to be a very, very small number. I'm also going to add a string for the model number because I may want to track uh, which part number I use to order the part. Uh, again, this is purely informational and does nothing to, uh, uh, to drive the behavior in the path workbench. And the tool is also sold with a number of different uh, coatings available. So I'm adding an enumeration property. Uh, this is av available in an uncoded and a coded type. So I've, I'm adding the, the values for the enumeration there in the, uh, in the coding property. And the user would be able to select that. Now our feed and speed currently doesn't use codings, but it could in the future. So uh, same sort of thing. We could develop functionality to do that. Now you'll see that the properties, when they're displayed in the property pane, are showing the spaces. That's because we uh, named them with that Pascal case, uh, each word capitalized. Uh, so they're displaying in a very friendly way. A uh, user can select from the enumeration and enter the values. Okay, I'm ready to uh, save this tool shape. It is largely complete. Uh, there's a couple things you want to make sure of when saving the tool shape. In the Preferences on the uh, Document tab, there are two options that control whether or not FreeCAD saves a thumbnail with the image. You want it to save the thumbnail, so you want that one turned on, and you want the logo turned off. Uh, the thumbnails are used for generating the, the image that is shown in the uh, uh, editor when you're editing the tool bit. And then you want to have the image just kind of roughly centered and, uh, and scaled appropriately. And then you're going to save it wherever you save your tool bits already. Uh, I suggest you not save them into the default location because we may overwrite things in the future. So uh, save them where you save your custom tool shapes. Now I'm ready to use the tool bit. And I can go ahead and create a tool bit and select the shape. And then give the tool bit a name. And it'll end in FCTB. And it was asking if I wanted to overwrite it. Now you see that I got an error here. And uh, uh, what has happened is uh, possibly a bug. We're going to need to investigate this. Uh, but uh, I'll delete the tool bit that I just created. And then I'm going to reopen the, uh, uh, the tool shape file that I created. 
And you remember that image plane? Well, I left it in the document but turned off. And the tool bit system is looking for the first uh, item in the document tree and it needs to be the body that contains the shape. So it was finding that image plane and giving an error on that. So I've deleted the image plane and resaved the document. And now if I create the tool bit uh, using the same shape and I can even use the same tool bit file that I had and now I get no error and if I double click on it you'll see that it opens up the editor and I can now set the properties on uh, on this tool bit so they're all all the properties that we had are now overwritable and my image is not quite uh, not quite uh, centered the way that I would like uh, but I'll add a tool bit to my uh, job and you see if I open up the tool controller and then the uh, the tool bit, there's the tool underneath and you see the image is kind of off-center. Uh, it's accurate, but it's just kind of ugly. So I'm going to reopen my tool shape one more time and just center it in the, uh, uh, in the window. I'll close the uh, dialog so I get a little more space. Uh, roughly center it like that. Save the document. I can close the tool shape and now if I reopen the editor for that tool you'll see that the thumbnail has updated. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, I'm anxious to see what we're able to do with this in the future and uh, what you guys come up with for custom tool shapes. Uh, if you have ideas for how we can make this either easier to use or more powerful, I uh, encourage you to leave a comment down below or better yet, come out to the uh, FreeCAD forum and join the discussion there. Uh, please don't ask for uh, technical support on this uh, in the YouTube comments. Um, YouTube comments don't let us attach files or images and it's just really difficult to try to support somebody there. So, you know, if you're having trouble with it, I'd be happy to try to help you or somebody else in the, for in the community will. Um, but please come out to the forum where you can attach your file and, uh, and where we can put up images and help each other out there. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, I'm doing my best to improve the Path Workbench and have the best uh, open source uh, CAM software available. And uh, if you like what I'm doing and would like to support me, please check out my Patreon page. I'll leave a link. And uh, uh, if that's not your thing, then please give the video a like and subscribe because that's also helpful. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.